My first symptoms were just a little shakiness in my left hand. My right foot was shaking when I would suspend it off a table. Really slight little tremor in my pinky and then sometimes in my other fingers. It all started with a little stiffness in my left hand and they noticed my movement is, was decreasing. In the early 2000s, I started losing my sense of smell. Even before the tremor showed up, uh, I was very depressed which was not at all like me. My walking was getting worse. My handwriting was getting very, very tiny. About six months later, my right hand began to shake. And then I noticed that my index finger on my left hand was tremoring. Those were, the, those were the symptoms that were starting to get more alarming. Most of it was very confusing because I didn't understand what it was. Honestly, I didn't know if I should worry about it or not. I thought maybe it was anxiety. My whole world was, was spinning in a big, you know, a, a big tornado and I was being sucked into the vortex of it. You know, what, what's going on? Immediately I went on the internet, which scared the pants off of me. I suspected it could be Parkinson's because it only affected the right side. It was actually a nurse who uh, suggested that I might have Parkinson's. When I compared symptoms with a friend of mine who has been diagnosed with Parkinson's, I started checking the list and saying, I've got that too and that too. And I was referred to a neurologist and he told me at that point that he says, uh, quite clearly you have early onset of Parkinson's. Dr. Hauser is the person that told me that definitively that I had Parkinson's. And it made perfect sense, which it always does in hindsight. I was relieved to have a diagnosis because I kind of thought that's what it was anyway, but I was just devastated. Of course, very scary when you find out that you have something as serious as Parkinson's disease. The, the sort of Damocles had been hanging over my head and pow, came down and <clears throat> effectively sliced me right out of the life that I had and the, the direction I was moving in. I've given up the thought of that in 20 years I'll be walking. I'll probably be in a wheelchair. We both cried. I have a real close cycling friend who's three years younger than me who races bicycles with me, and he was diagnosed about the same time I was. What I understand about Parkinson's is there's no cure. Uh, the neurons in my brain that produce dopamine are dying off, and they, they don't know why this happens in some people, but um, when enough of your dopamine neurons have died, then you st dopamine is responsible for your motor movements and also for a lot of different for your moods. Parkinson's disease almost uniformly progresses. It doesn't reduce life expectancy necessarily if well taken care of, but the symptoms get worse with time. It's my understanding that when your symptoms manifest themselves, as mine did several years ago, 80% uh, of those neurons are gone. I control the symptoms by taking uh, some medication several times a day. I control the tremors and the shaking of my right foot and my right hand with uh, drug therapy. For the most part, it's pharmacotherapy, medicines, pills that you take that don't really affect the progression of disease or the disease process, but rather help the symptoms. I'll need more medication as time goes down the road, and there'll be side effects from that. When I understood about some of the side effects, I was not very excited about that either. Over time, the benefit that I received kind of diminished, and uh, the disease process progressed. I think like anybody that has any kind of d disease, I'd like to be cured. I would like to just have it go away. And there's a great interest in stem cells. Uh, Dr. Hauser has been wonderful. And I also remember when she gave me that, that diagnosis that she said to me, you will have a stem cell procedure in your lifetime. The best hope that I've researched and have heard about is the, uh, the pluripotent stem cell procedure. So it's really very straightforward. I mean, it, it seems like magic, but it is science. The stem cells that will be used in the project are our own skin cells. They cultivate those with a method that was developed by a great researcher, uh, Dr. Yamanaka from Japan. They will be broken down to a neutral state. 
where they become pluripotent. The great thing about pluripotent stem cells is that they can give rise to any cell type in the body. And those stem cells will be reprogrammed into dopamine neurons. The neurons are cultivated and, and grown and multiplied to a point where there'll be sufficient number to implant in the person's brain to replace the dying and diseased cells with healthy cells. So we're the first ever to decide to do a, a trial um, that involves giving patients back the cells that they actually donated to us. And hopefully that will eliminate the motor symptoms that I have and the, the other non-motor symptoms I have. There's no ethical issues. It's a choice of the patient. It's simply our own stem cells reintroduced into our own bodies. There's very, very low chance of them being rejected by my body. And it wasn't until this technology for making pluripotent stem cells came along that it really was practical to imagine doing this uh, for individual patients and expecting a high level of success. The fact that Dr. Yamanaka received the Nobel Prize for, for his research uh, this past year uh, just gains validity to, to what, what we're doing in, in, the, in the field. In 2010, Sherry Gould, my nurse practitioner, called me and said that she had an excellent idea. I want to climb Kilimanjaro as a fundraising activity for our stem cell research. The upside, the potential side of it is, is phenomenal. It's a different kind of medicine which approaches real healing. I understand that it is a pilot program. I understand that it is entirely funded um, by donation. There's no corporate sponsorship here. The impressive thing to me about this project as a doctor is that it's been totally grassroots funded. From 10K runs, from parties being held by Parkinson's patients and their caregivers. It's grown into a phenomenal national effort on the part of volunteerism. I am so impressed with the patients because they're not only um, really dedicating themselves, but the fact that they're actually working with us towards their own treatment. I think I've never experienced anything like that before. This is pure science. I know that this will be huge. It will be my get out of jail free card. It's a step towards relieving a lot of people in this country of discomfort and disease. The barrier that we're going to face is unfortunately a now a costly one. We have to raise $2.5 million to get FDA approval. If we don't, this simply will not happen. So we're at a point now where we need to branch out um, to not just the little grassroots region that we've been able to reach so far, but a national or international level of um, philanthropy. It just gives me just a hope and encouragement and to move forward and to keep doing the things that I like to do and not throw in the towel in the game of life. There's also uh, a certain amount of pride to be involved in such important research. I feel like an astronaut. I feel like one of the early astronauts. Just to be a part of it uh, is, is an honor and I think a well worth risk. There's a million and a half or so people in this country that have it, who knows how many worldwide. This will be helping not just the, the swath of people that have Parkinson's, which is significant and, and worthy in itself, but it will be helping many other people because we'll begin to understand how stem cell therapies can really be effective in curing a vast number of diseases. Right now there are um, preclinical trials going on for diabetes, for ALS, for Alzheimer's disease. The door is starting to open, open to a new frontier in medicine and um, we're standing right at the threshold. I think this is the uh, foundation of a world of change that's going to happen very rapidly. I feel it's really opened up a huge opportunity to find healing. And making an, an investment in a program like this would, would be an opportunity to be on the cutting edge and to really get a foothold in these developing technologies that are ultimately gonna help so many people. And basically, the fundraising is the key to getting us there. This is the, this is the kind of opportunity um, to really make, make a difference. To at least know when all is said and done that I was part of a project that tried to uh, do something for, for mankind it is very rewarding. It's provided an, a purpose for my life. I think the future's bright. <laughs>